today is 6.30 on September 12, 2020, We're going, right? Yeah, you're good. I'm good to go. I'm going to open up the Hadley Conservation Commission meeting. And tonight on the agenda, we have three things. The first is a continuation, <clears throat> notice of intent, 170-294-105 Street. On behalf of the FBI, On behalf of Full of Grace Farm, the stock, UMass Stockbridge School of Agriculture, Larder Consulting seeks to perform grading and stormwater improvements for the horse farm and is developing a wetlands restoration plan. Site visit conducted by Kayla Ubrell and Gary Collister on 628. <laughs> so who would like to start? I can start. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with the drawing set. And then I was going to share our response letter. Um, to the comments that were I, I have to make one comment before yep. I go forward. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so tonight we do not have a quorum five, maybe three. Mm -hmm. We total about five members. We only have two. So this is going to be more informational tonight. You can present and comment to the peer review by the clerk and see if we can find common ground. Okay. And then we'll rediscuss it when we continue the hearing to next October 10th, the second okay. Tuesday. So tonight we're just going to. You can't go on it. Yeah. You got to represent a lot. So we'll just try to take care of some of the sticking points. Yep. Make sure we can make get some progress time. done so that when we come in October, it'll probably be easy peasy. And okay. have a plan and because obviously you, the responses from the clerk to the clerk came just now. Yeah. Well, we just got the review okay. today. today. <laughs> you are are you um I'm Erica Larner, uh the wetlands consultant. Are, and but you're not with the clerk. No, 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 no. Peer review. Is it peer review people? Oh, here? McClure. I thought you said the clerk. I no, McClure. Yes, they are not peer review. They're not here, no. no. I don't know if they're going to be able to comment just to see if they want to make comments on your comments. Yes. But. Um, so I guess our response, most of the uh, responses are saying that we can make the update or make the update in the drawing or in the stormwater report. Um, and so our plan was after the discussion today, we can take whatever notes we have from the discussion and make the updates and then send them to you guys before the next meeting. Do they have to go back to the peer review? Um, yeah. First yeah. One. If we want feedback on yeah. that. Yeah. That's why we fine. recommend yeah. yeah. So you come up with the solutions to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. And okay. hopefully yeah. they'll say, yeah, like that. And yeah. Be easy. Or get it worked out before next meeting. If you yep. have to do another revision, do it well in advance of the meeting. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I'll just go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'll just share my screen just uh, real quick. Um, Jeff, you need to do Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I just wanted to provide a rough overview, uh, general overview of the project. Um, so it's stormwater and agricultural best management practices for the Pool of Grace farm in Hadley. Um, so it's a working horse farm and currently the, um, so you can see on the aerial here, the drainage from the north generally uh, flows through this barn and collects uh, manure and, you know, dirty runoff. There's a manure storage here on this concrete pad. Um, this is like a concrete ramp that goes down that intermingles with that manure pile into the wetland area to the south. Um, so our improvement is basically routing, intercepting that runoff before it can do that and routing it around the barn um, in a more controlled manner to this uh, existing swale. And then we're also making improvements to the paddocks to stabilize them um, so that horses have a place to be uh, when the fields are wet um, to reduce the amount of erosion that could occur from that. And then also fixing existing <laughs> erosion in the driveway area here. Um, and then also regrading the arena to allow uh, sheep flow in to the north and south. Um, so currently, there's some ponding that's occurring here from the burn that has formed. Uh, so just a little more general detail. Um, 
So yeah, the, these French drains will be intercepting the stormwater around the barn and then rounding it about this pipe outfall into the existing soil. And then we have this swale down here to the south um, and then improvements to these two paddocks and improvements to the eroding uh, walkway here. Can you, excuse me, yep. can you show where mm -hmm. flag A22 is on here? Can you open it up a little? Yep. Um, right. So maybe. Sorry. I'm just looking at response to item one. Yes. So I guess, do you want me to open <clears throat> that, those uh, comments? Sure. Well, did you say A22? Well, that's that's <laughs> the, the uh, September 12th document, first page. Yep, right here. Talks about moving the outfall towards yep. flag A22. So, yes. So we um, initially, after the first, like the first drawing set, we had received mass D EPs. Yeah, I wrote them on March 15th. Thanks for me. Um, so then in response to that, we had moved it out of the swale initially. Um, and then we came to the hearing, the first hearing, and it was the commission's opinion that the swale was not jurisdictional. So we moved it back to how we okay. had it. So let's get into that. Is flag A22 a wetland flag? If it was to be a non, if it's a stormwater swale, it would be not a jurisdictional wetland, but it is meant to represent uh, wetland vegetation and hydrosoils. Okay. So, what's why? Why is what's the basis of the commission saying uh, it's not jurisdiction? As I understood it at the meeting, and the commission can correct me if they understand differently. The discussion was that part of the issue was that swale had not been cleaned in a while. It was causing backups and that the commissioners believed the pipe came from the Roosevelt um, Stockbridge roadway areas. But I didn't have direct evidence of that, but um, the commissioners have more firsthand knowledge. I did reach out to the DPW director, um, sorry, not director, one of the people who work for the DPW, I'm not sure which one. Um, and he did say that they had been doing, they had done since 96, some repaving and resetting and some catch basin replacements in those areas. So um, that was the best information that I could gather looking at the registry of deeds, talking to the DPW, um, that there is a general understanding that that is likely to be discharged and they'd be able to work on, a, <clears throat> excuse me, catch basins for Roosevelt and Stockbridge. Okay, so let's go into the definition of stream. So is there a defined channel? Is there, the swale is a defined channel? Is there a defined channel? Yes. Okay, there's flow. There's flow, yes. And there's wetland vegetation touching above the top of bank. Above the top of bank, yes. Okay, so under the regulations, that defines a regulated intermittent stream. Would we not need to see some sort of exposed substrate with the intermittent stream because it is entirely vegetated throughout there without any exposed substrate. No, if it's again, it's, it's if I may through the chair, the definition of a stream. 10.04 stream. Uh, body of running water, which moves in a definite channel in the ground due to a hydraulic gradient which flows within, into, or, up, or out of an area subject to protection. Uh, such a body of running water, which does not flow throughout the year, is intermittent, is a stream except that portion up gradient of all bogs, swamps, wet meadows, and marshes. So if the location in question has vegetated wetlands touching the bank, it's a regulated intermittent stream, no matter where it comes from. So the only thing that would not be jurisdictional is upgrading of it. <clears throat> so I mean, it was not it was not constructed. It was not constructed under an order of conditions subsequent or in compliance with the stream crop in compliance with the stormwater handbook from 1996 to 2008, or in compliance with the stormwater standards subsequent to 2008. It was created way a long time ago. I'm interested in terms of the intermittent stream, and and I actually can I very much see the that we will both make the best arguments we can for the the jurisdictional aspect of 
the BBW and the discharge. In terms of, um, in general, does that mean that all outfalls for stormwater, as soon as they exit the outfall, then become intermittent streams? Let me give an example. Were, we, were you here during the Hadley case, the detention basin from eons ago, 2003, 2000? Oh, I was at the board, but I remember. Case law from Hadley Mall, the detention basins there, some of them were considered to be the detention basins and the outfall were considered to be jurisdictional weapons, jurisdictional string. Those were created pre-1996. Actually, the reg regulatory changes defining certain things weren't in existence at the time. So anyway, it doesn't matter if it's a stormwater outfall or if it's just runoff. I thought there was a culvert underneath the road, Stockbridge Road. There's a culvert, there's a pipe that discharges from drainage from the roadway at the top but of that swale. Not anything but on the other side? Not on the other side. Okay. I cracked on the other side. So it's not a conveyance. So, but technically, regardless of how it's created, you have a defined channel, you have a hydraulic gradient, you have flow, and you have vegetative wetlands touch in the bank. So regardless of how it's created, it's a regulated stream. If it was maintained as a stormwater soil under agricultural exemptions before it became a horse farm, before because it was not a horse farm. Agricultural the exemption is gone after five years, right? So the five-year agricultural exemption is just gone. So yeah, so an agricultural field that hasn't been used, I mean, a lot of agricultural fields have, would be considered bordering vegetative wetlands. You have a bunch in town. Once the five years is up, you yeah. want to do anything there, they're, they're regulated bordering vegetative wetlands. I wonder if there's a decent argument that that would be considered land um, uh, adjacent or be, I can't remember the exact term, that's land that's um, for normal use or. Right, but we've already be, talked about this. The, true, but the, the Stockbridge the first, farm is not land and agricultural use. The property right next to it uses that water to use those hay fields and it collects the hay and it does sell the hay for a profit. What property is it on? The neighbor. Um, directly to the east, and that's the same owner. It's actually the, the property line is here. So part of the swale, right, is on that. Property. Yeah. yeah. So that is actually, yeah, it, part of that swale is on that property. Um, that's that is <clears throat> that is used for um, the haying okay. at the moment. So what is, what, so the, the swale, most of the swales on the, on the Stockbridge Farm property, so what's the what's the elevation dis difference between where the hay fields are and the swale? So this I mean I think you have a hard argument to prove that it's used for drainage for the for the for the hay field. It looks like the predominant most of the water is coming through the horse farm, not from the hay field. Right. So I I I you know I know what you're saying, I know mm -hmm. what you're talking about, the exemption. Land needed, even though it's not land and agricultural it's use. The accessory to it, right? But the farmer with the hay the is hay not field. managing that swale. That was actually part of the enforcement order we were issued was to clean that out and to manage it for the hay. What? There was an enforcement order issued over the summer, and the enforcement order called it a non-jurisdictional swale and what? asked us to clear out the vegetation and debris in the swale. I wasn't aware of that. It calls for, I think, an improved hydrologic connection between the swale and the Mill River. So it says. Wow. I had no idea. Well, that kind of changes things potentially. Uh, what paragraph does it say it's non jurisdiction? In the we're getting over the page. Let's see. This is the paragraph where we're just. Yeah. Wetland replication is not possible. The plan can include invasive speed, invasive plant mitigation, improved conditions, 
of the swale stream to the south. So it doesn't say in here anyway, it's not jurisdictional. That's not the way that sentence reads. So has the commission approved mitigation? They did get the plan at the meeting that I was ill for. Yeah. And I believe it was reviewed. I don't know if there was a formal vote to accept it. What? I don't know if there was a formal vote to accept it because I, I wasn't here for that. No. But no. We okay, so the commission have enough time to look over it. It's okay. not approved the mitigation plan. And I do so the commission the can the include that. They're not stating it's not regulated. Well, the actual vote on the record was to okay, determine it was a non-jurisdictional swale and issue the enforcement order as that. I think we did vote that it was non-jurisdictional okay. in the record. Okay, I think that was a huge mistake. So, how can we make our party be happy here? What can we do? A good solution to make both happy. <laughs> <laughs> Given that situation, uh, I'm just I'm just looking. My my job is to advise you in terms of what the regulations are. Well, period. But you also can appeal us too. If you okay, we can intervene. So we want to leave. So it's, I I don't want to bring this to my boss and say me <laughs> me not this. the scope of it for damages. I don't less than do that because nobody's going to come out smelling nicely. Okay. So I would recommend, since you don't have a quorum, is to think about it, put it on the agenda for the next meeting, and think about what you guys, how you guys are going to deal with this. So a formal vote at a commission meeting does not negate the fact that it might still be regulated because the only time you really call something a regulation. Not a regulated area is if you issue an order of conditions or a determination of public so if we make the assumption it's a regulated area, do you have a solution that would work in this in this situation? For the pipe outfall, we can move it back to how it was. I'm just concerned about the enforcement uh mitigation plan. The enforcement mitigation plan can be amended. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, we could you guys can amend that. We can pull it back. I think there were some concerns. That you were actually more concerned about the scour if we pull it back, pulling up more dirt. Um, I can't remember uh, again, exactly if you put what it was. Rap right adjacent, a couple inches off the BDW line, that's a setback. Yeah. As long as the pipe is above the uh, Are above we not the rip -rap. filling intermittent stream, then. No, if you, I guess the original plan had the outfall further north, right? It was a little bit, yeah, it was outside. Of, so if you and pull, then we have direct bank pipe, impacts. If you put riprap hat, yeah. just barely. We just, have the old plan where we did okay. pull it back. Okay. So I think that was rip two. Again, the regulations clearly state you, know you cannot you put me. cannot put a discharge in you know in bank or in BDW. So there must be a setback. So we had it right outside of the wetland line. So it's above eight twenty two. Yeah. So. It, there you go. So, I mean, you could actually enlarge maybe a little bit the stone riprap pad, pull the pipe back so the stones dissipated prior to touching the BBW. Yeah, it just got, it started getting tricky with elevations the yeah, more we pull I it see. out. Yeah. Um, and so, the safety of the horses in particular and the riders if they step off and. Well, that make sure they don't step off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell the people. I don't know if I can control the horses entirely. <laughs> yeah. What is that right there that goes around? Is that a fence? This yeah. silt fencing. Oh, silt fencing. Okay, all right. Uh, or but we change it to fiber. Yeah, roll. fiber roll. Yeah. I believe instead. Okay. It, yes. uh, rev, it so as long as there is a setback, that's all I. That's all I want. Okay. Happy camper. Yes, yeah, so we I'll can change it camera. back to this. So we can do that? Yes. And again, if you want to make the cleaning out with, with well-defined limits of the intermittent of stream, the permit either is part of the notice of intent or under enforcement. I mean, you guys are working on mitigation. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, which I have not reviewed. I, I have to, I'm leaving it out for you guys. As long as there's a setback and I get some mitigation for the unpermitted BDW Walter, I'll pretty much be happy. 
Okay. So let's go that way. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. It sounds reasonable. And you can amend the, the mitigation plan. You can amend the enforcement order. You know, I would recommend it all be tweaked prior to the issuance of an order of conditions. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then perhaps, Kayla, we can look at the what I proposed together and see if we can address any concerns prior to October for that. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I like it. We have fun debating. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm just opening the comments here. So in this letter, I we um, have their comments in italics and then our response to anything that we need to respond to in the whole. So this first comment was in regards to that outfall and it just, the comment was also that there was no width specified and our response is that the plan view is actually to scale. So the downstream end is six feet and the upstream end is three, but we can certainly add a call out to the drawings, just indicating the width on that one. Um, and then our other response was that we can provide our calculations for sizing of that public protection. Um, and then this last response was just in regards to what we just talked about, um, whether that swale is non-jurisdictional. So we were going off of the um, non-jurisdictional. No, I understand. Yeah. I, I, I get it. But we'll, okay. we'll adjust yeah. that. And, but I think the, the real... The only real things were adding some call outs to the plan, measurements, um, clarifying what type of erosion control and that the um, graph, the swale at the edge of, edge of the paddock that is about a 1% grade, they wanted to see what the calculations were for why they wouldn't need um, yeah. rip wrap at the end of that. Yeah, so, and so those are easy to provide, I think. Yeah. Do you want me to go through all these though in detail just to make sure I have everything that you guys want? Um, I mean, there's not that many. No, it's, okay. it's just uh, my fault. Okay, so yeah, that swale to the south. Um, the comment was to add outfall protection at the end of that one, and we didn't have it in there because the um, model velocity in that swale isn't very high. It's a so we the vegetation can handle the velocity coming in, so we don't need that rip rat outfall protection, but we can certainly provide the calculations for that and. The engineer can review it. Okay. Make sure that they agree with that. Um, so these ones were there was no issue. The water quality. Um, we agreed that for one of the drain basins, we can increase the one that has the grate. We'll increase the sump to forty inches. So you get um, a deep sump instead of just a regular pen okay. basin. Yeah, yep. that's agreeable. Yep. Uh, and then there was a comment on this uh, downstream drain basin. It was shown to have a grate, but we can change that to solid cover because this um, French drain is going to be intercepting stormwater along the whole flow path anyways. Um, so that's fine. We can change that. Okay. Uh, what did you have for soils there? Do you remember? What kind? Um, I mean, what hydrologic group? to be clay in there. Oh, gosh. okay. So you get yeah. lousy uh, infiltration. Yeah, yeah. really okay. bad infiltration. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one was on. The other comment here was on adding long term pollution prevention measures so we can add some text regarding that in the OM plan, including good housekeeping, maintenance of landscaped areas, driveway surfaces, and manure management. Okay. Uh, and then this one was just in regards to there's a disconnect because we had had silt fence at one point in the drawings, but then we changed it to fiber roll based on comments during the first hearing, but we didn't update the stormwater report. So we can certainly update the stormwater report to match the drawings, which are correct. And they include a detail and specifications for the fiber roll. Um, <clears throat> and then, oh, they did have a comment here, which they thought that we should extend the fiber roll to this flag, but we're not really proposing any earthwork up here. So we can do that if you, 
if the commission thinks that's necessary. If you're not disturbing the vegetation, I don't see a reason to get in there and disturb the vegetation or put a fiber wall in. Yeah, you get a stake in or yeah, it's just, it seems like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think that they'll end up having a stockpile <clears throat> in case an act, you know, something happens anyways on site. So mm -hmm. if there's a problem, it'll get addressed. Yeah. Says my Um, And then, yeah, this, we just responded here to the standard 10 that we can update the O&M plan to include measures to prevent and address illicit discharges. Um, everything was good with the Hadley bylaw. So we, for the last couple comments, um, we attached the FEMA map and the work is outside of the zoning flood hazard zone. Um, and then the last, second to last one is regarding the jurisdiction of that swale, which we already talked about. And then just the general comment providing the computations for the pipe swale rip wrap, which we all, we have all that, so we can package it up okay. and send it to them. Well, we're not gonna make a motion or whatever, we're just gonna continue this till yep. October 10th, okay. 6.30 p.m. You'll be first on your agenda. Okay. Yeah, care. before we get out of here, do you guys have any concerns? Because we have two commissioners here that if you see <clears> anything <throat> that you really, really don't like so far, mm. let us know. We'll make sure it disappears before the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Okay. 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 All right. We'll move on to the next one. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Sorry, it's taking so long. Next is the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, 328 Russell Street. Continued, Glenn LaPlante has filed an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, 328 Russell Street. Delineation was performed by SWCA Consulting Site Visit, conducted by Kayla Lubrell on 830. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Did anybody get to address this tonight? Yes, I'm here. You want to make an adjustment? I think it's pretty straightforward, don't you? It was just a matter of we don't have a swarm. Oh, okay. So we have to continue it to. Uh, okay, should I not even bother presenting? I did update it's, some flagging. It's probably not. You guys just have to represent again, anyway. Okay. I think you know, we're not going to really question anything about the flag. Yeah, it's, it's, I did a side very, visit. Very little movement on the flags, anyways. Yeah, okay. I mean, if you want to give like a brief. You know, and then you can raise any concerns that you have. I don't have any concerns okay. myself, so I I just make I just make motion that we just continue to October discuss it then. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm I'm very familiar with the site. It's not it's just it's a tough site. We we'll put something in there anyways. Yeah. Yeah. We did update the flagging ever so slightly, um, just to make sure that the buffer zone there's some offsite wetlands. We wanted to make yeah. sure the buffer zone was correctly shown. Yeah on the property and we did move um some wetlands as long as we had agreement among all the people doing the reviewing of it what or no yeah, was a yeah. question of i guess i was just wondering how you ended up so is this the the one that's wetland four is that the one that you that was on the other property and you were wondering how to flag it onto yeah okay. and i just flagged it at the edge okay and it was kind of, it did come up okay to the cool. edge um so we just added some flags just on the property line. So mm. now it, it shows correctly for the buffer zone. Mm. Um, and then over here, the flags were not as close together. I mean, it's really thick alder in there. And, um, you know, I had done the delineation last November and it was very dry year last year. And so um, this year, given how wet it was, yeah. you know, the veg and the hydrology were slightly it was more obvious, so I moved the flags out, I don't know, about 10 feet. And this is the property that, if you guys remember, had the monuments that were put in yep. relative right. because of the Home Depot years ago. Yeah. So I did find one monument over here. It was weird. It's just one, whereas all the other monuments on these wetlands were there. So I just encompassed the monument that I found, and the wetland got so know. basically, it's going to reflag, recheck with, with a very wet season. So yeah. the results are going to be probably. Yeah, it's a little wetter than it was so, last. Yeah. But basically, the same as you saw in when I was here in August. 
Um, but I will come back in October. Are you calling the two right there in the southwest corner? Are you calling those IBW or BBW? This thing? Yeah. Least... We're calling that BBW. Okay. I mean, originally it was IBW, and then there's a DOT project yeah. going on on Route 9 right. in Valley Novo. Oh, yeah. They called the BBW and the commission had already approved it as BBW. And okay. So you got to call it BBW. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, it's odd that such a large wetland is isolated. It, I believe it is isolated. If you walk around the whole thing, there's no streams, outlets, but it's fine. We're, it, yeah. You've got to call it BBW because you've got an existing order of conditions that call yeah. it BBW. Right. Yeah. So we had changed, we had originally had called it IBW. It doesn't change much because the bylaw yeah. regulates IBW anyways. So um, it's still a wetland that's okay. jurisdictional. So yeah, this is this is the plan that you'll see again in October 10th. I, I, I got the final notice of the third member not being able to attend about an hour before the meeting. Okay. So there's no chance to really notify you and yeah. say, hey, don't even bother coming. But. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> Exactly. Um, so we'll be back October 10th and then, oh, we have a DEP number. That was the other thing we couldn't, mm -hmm. we could not, um, close. It'll be pretty quick. Okay. Next Thank course. you so much. Okay. Have a good night. And then next on the agenda is a request for determination of applicability, 22 River Drive, Cameron Musco. Yeah. He's still here. Musco. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Seeks to add a 20 by 20 living room addition to the north side of his Single family home, the house located in the riverfront area, site visit conducted by Kayla on 823. And uh, you have a request for determination now. I have um, copies of the application. Sure. So how long have you owned it? Um, since 2018. Oh, okay. Because there had been some tree clearing prior to that. So he didn't do it. I don't think on, I don't think on this one. It was one oh, yeah. It was there, one, this one further the north. No, this one. Because I checked in the ranch. For the no, north. yeah, there is extensive tree clearing. Okay. Oh, this is the one that this is a cost that you want to add the elementary school. Oh, I didn't. The, the other one was further up past right. No, this is the one. There's been some clearing up here. If you look at the earlier areas, this was all vegetated. And now it's cleared, but it happened, I think, before 2018. So. Yeah, yeah. when we bought the house, I, I, I had heard about this, and so okay. I contacted the commission. They said we're. Behind and I, we haven't talked There's a lot of work done up here. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I haven't looked that far. Okay. So, uh, protection over process, my supervisor used to say, if you can get the same level of protection as under an RDA versus a notice of intent, then you can consider issuing a negative determination. So if this was a notice of intent, the primary requirement would be an improvement over existing conditions, which would be planting of or, or restoring some of the vegetated area, some of the lawn area to, to native trees and shrubs. So you're in the, the 100 to 200 foot riverfront zone, yeah. which work is allowed, right. but mitigation is allowed because you, you're taking lawn area right. and converting it into an impervious structure. Right. Right. So they, they would like to some remediation or... or so you've got to give something back to Mother Nature. Compensations okay. for that. Okay. So I can make a suggestion. Come up with an area you don't need as long. Okay. A couple hundred square feet minimum. Mm -hmm. Somewhere on the plan. Come up with a planting plan. Okay. And then, that, you know, because technically the regulations require additional step yeah. called nose. Okay. Which is... Expensive, time consuming, and a lot more paperwork. Right. But if you will offer the commission on a plan some type of revegetation of the area to offset what you're doing, okay. the commission can entertain yeah. issuing I mean, a negative about, determination. Like, would it be reasonable along the north side of the property? There's like a wooded area it's toward the wooded area. It's basically that's the same plane as the lawn, and that's just not the lawn. So if we just right. no, extended that. that out, which, some amount, which way towards the house, towards, or towards the, the house. road, or I guess either, but probably towards the house. Well, mean, the preferred the preferred area is closest to the river, so you've okay. already got extensive vegetation, you know, over the slope. Yeah, but 
the more you can do to protect the river versus protect versus farther away. Okay. So the closer you are to the river for mitigation, yeah. the better it is versus putting it further away. If anything, okay. it'd be preferable to be like this is back from the river bank as your addition. You're 20 by 20. So right. The top of bank it is comparable on the other so, side. So if we did, so I guess what I mean is like, can I walk over that? Well, you can even do a rectangle. If, if we did one going, going like this. Well, is that my reference is down here. I mean, you've already got this, you've got lawn here, so somewhere in this area is your, always your preferred side. Yeah, I guess what I was recommending was this, because it's similar. I mean, it's the same distance back as this. That's actually closer here, so you could do a rectangle here. This is also plausible. Um, this is already kind of... Uh, Unusable. It's lawn, but it's, you know, there's some big trees around it, so that area I could also... Well, could also I've play. told you my preference, the closer to the river, the better. I mean, you're not going to do anything down here. You're going to no, have yeah, something really just... in there. So come up with the square footage, come up with the planting plan. It will basically be restored to what you see here. Not a landscaped area, but something you're just going to leave. This, this, this actually, I think, might be a reasonable area. It's not an area you need. Yeah, I can do. I mean, we, can, we could totally put plantings here. Yeah. Um, so again, okay, come up with a square foot, come up with a planting okay. plan. And how do I determine, like, I mean, maybe I can ask you this, but like square foot, just, I mean, 400 square feet is very small. I mean, is that what you're looking for? Just a 400 square foot well, area? at least that much. Okay. If you want to do 500, if you want to do 10,000, that's right. Five, maybe, well, but, <laughs> <laughs> sure, long. If, so. if, if you want to go over a little bit, you could, it would compensate for some, say, some landscaping to do around that. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. okay. You got a little... Yeah, that makes sense. I would say go back five years. Yeah, yeah. And try to put it over. Yeah, I can. Once you get out, I mean, it doesn't take much to make up. No, no, no. How do we get? We have to get uh, an environment scientist, somebody to tell you what to use for plantings. I can just go to the so one of the landscapers here, okay, and they'll tell you what's appropriate. But the easiest thing is just see what's already there. Yeah, yeah. In their area, and just get those. Okay. And then again, you're going to leave it alone. Just let it grow. Yeah. That's cool. You know, you don't want to put trees next to the house. Yeah, yeah. So that's the disadvantage of putting it, uh, you know, between the wooded area and your house because someday, you know, you don't want trees overhanging. The house. Yeah, yeah. That's there, fair. they're not going to overhang. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Right. And then we could handle it as an RDA. Yeah. Right. And uh, we would, all we would add would be siltation barrier. It's a it's a level lot. They're, they're a yeah, sufficient totally level right. area that we're making. Yeah, I even need. Right. We can just throw it in and make yeah. it. Yeah. So that. again, the intent is how can you, how can you, what can because you do? Because they, they are going to, it's going to have a foundation, it's going to have a basement. Right. So there's going to be a lot of soil piles. Soil, soil, soil piles, which I'm going to recommend they put on the roadside. Okay. So just sort of. That would be a condition. Yeah. Yeah. So, we can do all the work. Yeah. We can put all the storage of soil yeah. on the So basically, all the storage of soils and yeah. whatever, we're going to want. Uh, yeah. Towards the front. So. Side. Toward the front of the house, yeah. put that in your plans, yeah. as well as in here showing out a plan mm -hmm. your mitigations for you need, yeah. you know, compensation. Okay, so let's feed them all. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> so, what are our steps then? Like, uh, do we have to do we bring this back in a month? And vote we're gonna, we're basically to... informally, gonna, we're not gonna do a motion, we can't vote on it. <laughs> we're gonna then use the third hearing. Okay. On October 10th, we start okay. at 6.30. Then they move along. And we meet once more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, because we didn't have a quorum. Okay. We can't vote on anything. Okay. This is actually good because I think there's more work you have to do anyways. Mm -hmm. It was good to bring this up. But we had Mark here to make sure. Right. Because I was leaning toward an NOI because okay. of the river front. Yeah, okay. And being able to, you know, I think a lot, I, I drove by today, a lot, a lot, a lot of sufficiently flat enough. Yeah, yeah. The house is definitely pre, it's an old house. It's, yeah. It's been on the river front for a long yeah, time. Yeah. Is this house on both sides the same amount of structure within the proximity of the river? It's li of like building yeah. going on along yeah. that section of the river. It's not like you're, you're encroaching upon or going further close than anybody else yeah, on yeah. that section of the river drive. Yeah. It just happens to be you're doing the work after the River Protection Act of 1996. Yeah, right. Which, so basically, I'll, I'll update the plans, bring them back. I'll resubmit the form to DEP. Yeah. I think no, I'll just, 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 just update so the plan. I, I think yeah. you, you're looking for a small family dish on a small house to begin with. I think it's, it's reasonable. Okay. We're going to try to make you happy. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Right. No reason. Right.
Okay. Other business, we have <clears throat> to reissue a certificate of compliance for 10 Mill Valley Road. I don't think we could do that anymore. You um, can't get a form. Yeah. Form. So we'll move that to October. Now, do we have a copy of the yeah, so this was for the um, ideal movers and storage. Oops, right. And the, I guess the property owner had lost the original certificate of compliance and, um, or do not record it at the registry of deeds and someone has it and we don't know where it is. So we have to just sign another one. Um, do we don't have a copy in our folder? We do, but it's not the original copy. They need the original copy at the registry of deeds with the original signatures. Right. That is mailed to the property owner who doesn't have it anymore. Um, so we just need to sign an, another one. Now, what do we use for dates? Do we use those dates from previous? Yeah, the only thing you have to do is make the registry happen. We're probably Seriously. better off. We're probably better off to use the current dates because that yeah, way, because it's new, different commissioners. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, you can't backdate. Brenda, you have a question on the case? Yeah, I, I'm just here because. We had asked uh, what we want to do is we have a we want to put a 500 gallon fuel tank close to our building. It's away from we have a seasonal, if you will, um, stream. You could say tennis, yeah. Yeah, and I think that they So this is also Mill Valley Road too, Brenda? Yes, right next door to right ideal. Next, right next door to this. It's above ground. We have a, a we want to do it all uh, the uh, area around it to be concrete. Um, and we're going through a, a company that's uh, related to FL Roberts. They do everything. And they, they told us that they're going to do you know, all the, the footwork for all of this, and we found out, no, they're not going to do it. You know, it's our property, and I want to make sure this thing's done right. I don't want to have any issues. So and, do you do you have no plan to look at the, you're trying to put a 500 gallon tank? Yeah. Above ground? Above ground. Above ground. Above ground in a containment? In, in a containment area. In yes. a concrete containment? Yes. It is very wet and the concrete's going to go right to the end of the nozzle, as a matter of fact, so we don't have any issues anywhere. But is this any was is very proximity to wetlands or what? We have a seasonal. They call it a seasonal stream right down by where the town little has a shed there, and so we're going to need to see that. It's one hundred and sixty-one yeah. feet away. You don't have map. Oh, you don't have a laptop. You don't have it. You pull up. Mass map, or you know, we don't have any. You have to bring a, a set of plans and so on. Join and pull up Mass map, if that's helpful. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. These new toys, it's something. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, we went to the GM. Because it's my job. <laughs> Not far Better you than me. Because we wouldn't get anywhere. <laughs> okay. And what's the uh, address? Eight, Mill Valley. We're right next door to Ideal. There. Okay. We got a solar farm right next to you. No, it's a solar farm. No, it's a solar farm. Yeah. 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 They, they do. <laughs> <they don't. laughs> so, whereabouts do you want to put this structure in the picture? I wish that I could. Right back. See where the corner of the building is right there? Was that corner? Back. No, back. The rear of it. Right there. Right there. Right there. Yes. Okay. Can you measure the distance from? 161. From the stream to that corner, yes, what 161 feet is fire at that time. It's already is that already impervious surface there? That one there, what's there? Yeah, grass, you got the air uh, gravel, gravel, so it's already impervious, yes. Wow, and now you will be exempt. So there's an exemption 10.022b, something or other. Uh, 
That's what we were told it might, but I don't want to take any chances. Conversion of lawn, but it's ground. To use as accessory to residential structures such as deck shed patios, pools, and various other things, as long as it's over 50 feet from the mean annual high or from bank or BBW, whichever is further, and erosion and sedimentation controls are used during construction. What about what about property lines? Is there a certain setback that has to be? There's, it's, it's, I mean, I think the, the setback. As long as the building inspectors have to. Yeah, fire oh yeah, department. fire department. Okay. I don't think we have a problem with the board. Okay. Well, uh, I would just wanted to make sure. I don't want to. We did move to the voter because it's, it's, it's really not jurisdictional. No, but you know. Is that, I, that's a propane tank. You said the gas is 500 gallon. Uh, diesel. 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 That's why it's about contained whether we have concrete. Right. Yes. Right. Oh, absolutely. Well, well, it might, but that, that's, not a, that's not a single family house? No, no. Oh, that's a, a business. Is okay. Yeah, it's a shop. It's uh, an office with the exemption a only applies to uh, single family houses. So I don't know if that's a perennial stream or intermittent stream. Even so, he's like, oh, well, yeah, we're not going to get any shot of this. <laughs> I don't want to get any shots. Thank you. So, so what do we do then? Yeah. Do we need any? Just right the building inspector or Mike Spake, they have a good contact. You know, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll call go. Mike in the morning. Then. Mike Michael knows how to get a hold of me. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. All right. Thank you so much, Boy. I appreciate it. Take it easy. Yeah, it's great pulling that up. Super. Yeah. Other business. Well, we already took care of that. Bills, updates, Paul Alexanderson and Memorial Tree Planting and Plaque. Yes, yeah, so Paul Alexanderson has been shot to me regarding a tree planting and memorial plaque by the um, the half a day, mm -hmm. and I talked to Scott from the DPW, and he'd be willing to help us with the purchase of the tree and the transportation and planting of it. So maybe we could, after the meeting or sometime in the next few weeks, come up with a few words for the plaque and then figure out the, the okay. tree planting. We'll discuss it in the next meeting when we have all the other boards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, upcoming, upcoming learning opportunities? Don't have any. There are a bunch of MACC um, courses that I'm signing up for, and if anyone wants to join, I know Brandon expressed interest last meeting, so maybe I'll reach out to him. Yeah. Um, and I can sign us up. And then I have the meeting minutes from August. You can get all these up so I can retire. <laughs> and I pass it to Ray. I we can't really vote on the minutes. Oh, we can't vote on no. minutes. No. no. Okay. No. We don't have we don't have the people that were here. We don't have a quorum. We don't have to pass the minutes. Okay. Oh. And we don't need to make a motion for adjournment because I can't second the can. <laughs> so we're all done. <laughs>